topic of discussion today is how to increase your mental sharpness and prevent brain fog and fatigue. Do you struggle with brain fogginess and inability to focus? Research suggests that one in seven adults between the ages 18 and to 39 and one in four adults older than 39 will experience some short-term memory loss. Brain fog or mental fatigue can be caused by a long range of lifestyle problems such as lack of sleep, stress, and diet. It can also be caused by hormonal imbalances, chronic infections, and prescription medications. Whatever is causing the problem, you can always work your way towards health by making sustainable lifestyle changes and taking a whole body approach. If you want to learn natural ways on how to improve your memory and concentration, especially during these, this pandemic season, then this program will help you. In this episode, our guest, Dr. Vesna School, will educate us about our brain health and will discuss how positive lifestyle changes can help increase our mental sharpness and improve our ability to focus on everyday tasks. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot from our guest, Dr. Vesna School. Dr. School has over 35 years of experience in the medical field. She's a founding member and medical director of the Comprehensive Center for Women's Medicine, a multi-speciality holistic medical practice for women in Chicago. Dr. Vesna specializes in internal medicine, and she also has a fellowship in anti-aging and functional medicine. She focuses on alternative and complementary medicine and brings it into mainstream medical practice. If this is the first time you guys are joining us, my name is Dr. Rosina, and I have been helping people with stress, anxiety, and depression for the last 20 years as a medical doctor specializing in psychiatry, as a university professor, best-selling author, and speaker. I try to bring practical tools for health and happiness to you. And I started specifically this program, Happy and Healthy Mind with Dr. Rosina, because I truly believe that a lot of suffering can be prevented with simple mind training. And so we try to bring practical tips for your mental fitness here so you don't have to suffer unnecessarily. These interviews are broadcasted live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And if you're joining us live, you can put questions in the comments section. I would lo love to interact with you. And now, you know, we talk about these things. These are all educational purposes and it's not designed for treatment. So I encourage you to talk to your healthcare professional for specific advice. But what we can do is send you the resources and reminders for these programs so that you can join and ask the questions here. If you text us joyful to the number 38470, we'll send those to you. And if you're outside the US, you can't go get those links. We also post these resources in our Facebook group, Happy and Healthy Mind with Dr. Rosina, um, that you can join by clicking the link in the comment section. And just know that the purpose of this program is to bring health and happiness to more than a million people. So if you find any value in this program, please like, subscribe, and share so more people can be helped to live a happier and healthier life. So let's dive into our topic today, how to increase your mental sharpness and prevent brain fog and fatigue. So Dr. Vesna, can you tell us why it is so important to have this integrative approach for mental focus and sharpness? Dr. Zina, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I am a firm believer in integration of the best of the traditional medical education, as well as the ancient practices that uh, sort of marry one another in an integrative approach to longitudinal experience of health, rather than talk and think in terms of a conventional training that probably both you and I received, which is a model that is disease-based. In integrative approach, we look at genetics and how they express themselves. We look at the uh, environment's effect on our health, and we support our patients in achieving the self-sustainable health through some very practical day in, day out pra practices and empower them to realize that they can awaken their inner physician and achieve their most optimum state of well-being. And I frankly, after 35 years of practice, 
am not necessarily looking to expand my practice and see more and more patients for episodic problems. Rather, I want to empower them to be in full control of their health and wellness and make me obsolete or make me a consultant who periodically just uh, leads them to the next level of better functioning. Wouldn't it be wonderful? <laughs> like people take action before they get sick. So, so much of suffering could be prevented. And that's what I believe in. Like, you know, do the best you can. Sometimes illnesses would happen and you get the treatment, but do the best you can to prevent it as much as possible. So can you give us an example of a, a typical person that comes to you for help and how they get better? Well, uh, Dr. Rosina, my practice is geared towards women as the title of uh, the practice comprehensive center for women's medicine was it would indicate, but we also see about 10% of brave male patients brought in usually by their significant others. Typically they are people who are very much interested in taking part in their own health. Majority of them, women from their early 40s to their mid 60s um, and beyond, although we see, you know, really women from adolescence to senescence. My youngest is probably a teen who is too old to sit in a pediatrician's office with crawling babies and brought in by her middle-aged mother. And my oldest is probably a woman, actually is a woman in her 90s who is still vibrantly self-sufficient and leaving a healthy life. But a typical patient who has been really suffering in the last year or last nine months or so of this unusual health circumstance all of us are thrown in is a perimenopausal woman. And I can actually give a, an example of somebody who I just saw in second follow-up last week, 48-year-old uh, woman, mar married mother of two children, a 13-year-old girl who is significantly pre-hormonal, a nine-year-old boy with endless energy who is an executive managing a team of 70 people working from home for the last nine months, supervising the kids' virtual learning, managing the household, including a new dog that the kids wanted her to have um, to buy for them because they were lonely being cooped up. And ultimately now she's caring for the pup. Um, <laughs> having a husband Doesn't that who, happen usually? <laughs> having, you know, next door, having a husband who is working from home and blessed by the fact that both of their parents in their 80s are still alive, but uh, restricted with, with the pandemic and caring and coordinating their, their care. So needless to say, here's the woman who presents to me, she's generally pretty healthy, but uh, she is completely fatigued, totally depends on stimulants, caffeine throughout the day to keep going, high performer, does beautifully at her job, but then feels totally spent when you know she clicks off the computer and turns on the second job taking care of the family. Can't even remember, you know, where the the food prep from the previous day is having sort of a brain fog and feeling as if though she's running on fumes, experiencing serious sugar cravings. And uh, this is a person who normally eats pretty healthy, claims that her sleep has been disturbed and in the last four months has been having multiple awakenings, some hot hot uh, flushes and night sweats, sometimes unable to go right back to sleep and waking up fatigued. And she frankly volunteers something that has been a, really a, a, quite a common discovery among my patients that, uh, during COVID that there have been too many Zoom parties with alcohol. <laughs> and even though a cocktail with your friends for an hour in between your day job and your mom job fits many of them. It really is a, a, a problem adding oil to the fire. You know, she presented with those um, symptoms about uh, six months ago, and we started working on unpacking the root cause of all of that, which um, in, you know, if you look at her lifestyle and our, our lifestyle in general, we are fighting environmental toxicity and stress. And if I could 
summarize, you know, why she's feeling the way she's feeling other than being 48 and perimenopausal and hormonally partially imbalanced, I would say it's toxins and stress. So after you treated uh, or like gave her the recommendations and the tools that you, she used, uh, how is her life changed now? So, you know, over the last six months, we had three visits and I am delighted to share that just this last week, she is able to sleep a lot better. The, the discord in the family, which was caused by the usual stress is much better. Even her teenage daughter is responding less hormonally to her mom. They, uh, she lost uh, about 10 of the 19 pounds of COVID-19 that she gained during the <laughs> pandemic and has reincorporated exercise into her life. So her energy is a lot better. And frankly, without any specific cognitive uh, exercises, which I do use in my older patients, she is no longer forgetting where you know the dog's leash is or where she put the car keys. And she feels a lot uh, more in a way of mental clarity and focus. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, for the special of the day today, um, I have a little mind hack for how to remember where you keep the keep your keys. But <laughs> we'll we'll wait for that. But can you share us some of your tools or some of the things that help this patient to go from uh, feeling totally fatigued and foggy? to being able to focus and have the mental sharpness she needs and wants in her life. So, you know, when I see a patient like that, I, you know, have seen a few and been around the block a few times. My initial assessment was clearly, you know, this is a woman who has been running on fume in a constant state of fight or flight, whose adrenal reserves of stress hormones have been depleted. She's also a woman who is entering perimenopause and there may be estrogen, progesterone, testosterone uh, imbalances. So through a few simple tests, a salivary hormonal assessment of adrenal reserve, four point cortisol test, plus testing for um, sex steroid hormones, we discovered abnormalities that we needed to address. Another test is just a simple blood test that you know a primary care physician can order that looks at not only the typical uh, blood chemistries and blood sugar and electrolytes and blood counts, which can all lead to, if abnormal, to fatigue, uh, but also to look at inflammatory markers because we all live uh, on the edge in terms of our diet uh, that can be pro-inflammatory. Looking at vitamin D levels and B vitamins that may be low, and particularly where I live in Chicago, we have no sun for six months. So, you know, so, so much for the sunshine vitamin being gotten through exposure. So we've assessed that. And then finally, relying on some pretty sophisticated recent science of epigenetics, we, we recommend uh, looking at uh, about 30 biometric uh, parameters that are important in many, many intracellular reactions through a simple urine test called epigenetic bio uh, epigenetic biomarker profile and then creating a nutritional support program based on that particular person's needs and even though genetically there were some factors that affected her uh, these metabolic parameters through a science of epigenetics meaning uh, engaging lifestyle we slowly led to improvement and optimization, which created a sense of well-being. Wonderful. Other, you know, common sense things. And I think that uh, for our audience, it is really important to focus on some tangible things that we can change. Right. We, That's what I was going to ask. What can, uh, I think it's great to be able to go through this process of testing if you're having some symptoms, but what are some of the things we can take proactively even before we go through that? So. Absolutely. You know, everybody has to sleep, right? 
and how we sleep, where we sleep, how we create a comfortable sleeping environment really depends on the quality of sleep that we're going to get. And, and bear in mind that sleep is a restorative time. Restorative time, there is also, uh, there is research of, on the topic of leaky brain that is, uh, you know, a, a process of, of really shedding a lot of toxic content at night and restoring the brain chemistry if we sleep correctly and if we sleep the um, appropriate amount of time. Seven to eight hours is typically sufficient for uh, adults, but that doesn't mean seven or eight hours of being in bed, getting good quality sleep. So dark room, cool environment, no devices for about an hour prior to sleep. Wonderful. Um, we, did, we, did, we did a program on how to sleep naturally and peacefully and we just uh, launched our podcast so the sleep uh, episode is getting released uh, tomorrow and we talked about these things so i'll put the link in the comments so people can access but yes these are the things we were talking about how to improve the quality of sleep absolutely and then in a you know a perimenopausal woman who is hormonally challenged of course balancing her hormones is going to help her not awaken that many times finding some personal time and even people who are super busy you know if, if i ask them log your idle moments and your idle time and all of us waste at least 30 60 minutes a day you know unnecessary checks of your your social media or your phones or just dilly dallying around if you focus and allocate 10 minutes of your time for yourself upon awakening to just get ready for the day to, you know, say a little gratitude uh, prayer or be thankful that you could see the sun or the clouds when you wake up. And likewise, very important uh, to find some still time before retiring for the night is incredibly helpful. People have forgotten to take a relaxing bath. And, you know, just that alone may get your mind in the right frame to fall asleep better listening to music, practicing mindfulness or meditation or saying a prayer, all of that provides for you time, which is so important. And also then finding time for socialization, which is so hard in this uh, environment of isolation that we are, but it doesn't always have to be in person. It can be virtually like this and to stay connected. Now, uh, clearly, you know, my focus on keeping people healthy is through teaching them how to eat properly. I am personally an organic gardener and a certified raw organic chef, and I understand that not everybody can be that. But learning about the rainbow of colors on your plate and eating a mostly plant-based diet and taking conscious time to seasonally pay attention to decluttering your plate and detoxifying your body just like we declutter our closets so cellular detoxification to get rid of the toxins that we ingest inadvertently by breathing the air drinking the water eating the foods that are not organic is a must and then following through with a, with a healthy eating plan now how do we do that uh, in the pandemic and how did my patient do that well, she had a pitch party. Uh, what that meant was, you know, she and her husband and the kids went through the pantry and just basically tossed out all the unhealthy foods and then went and got a supply of healthy foods. Um, they jointly did the 10 day vegan cleanse and then followed with a Mediterranean type diet thereafter. And then exercise, which so many of us are lacking because the health clubs are closed and you're not, you know, you're sitting at the computer. It does not require the exercise benefits of 30 minutes a day do not require expensive health club memberships. They require what God gave us, our, our two feet and two legs, <laughs> two arms and a couple of little a cans of, of uh, a canned goods or free weights to do some weight work and to go out for a walk and you know to join their endless numbers of ways in joining online communities to do yoga or, or fitness classes together to stay fit 
Yeah. And then I finally, also like, I like that there's some YouTube videos on walking at home. Absolutely. And so um, my patients it, who don't even have a treadmill, you know, and I, I also do that sometimes just put the video and start walking in one place and still oh, you'll right. get that exercise. We did one time laughing yoga. Mm -hmm. One of the, one of the guests walk, walked us through and she still does the regular laughing yoga that you can join. So there are so many programs that people can do. It's a matter of like, you know, because our routines are affected and our structures affected, we tend to kind of lose that motivation. So once we remind that that is necessary, a few weeks back, we had a guest who was talking about how like he was doing everything, but he was not doing exercise. And so to motivate him uh, himself for doing exercise, now he has associated this uh, reward. So okay, he loves, you know, video games and watching TV. He doesn't allow himself to watch any TV or video game until he does at least an hour of exercise. Yes. And I think we just have to be careful in the appropriate reward because in our society, food is so often a reward and uh, that would not be the right kind of reward in, <laughs> in, in this arena. And then, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. There are just so many ways in which one can do exercises in a solitary manner and you know in this particular patient's uh, family they all started walking the dog not just her and and enjoying that activity of an outdoor engagement and getting out is just very important no matter what climate you live in and then finally you know looking at an array of uh, high quality nutritional supplementation because i don't care how adamantly uh, organic and clean and pure we are in our dietary choices and over the years our agricultural practices and food supply chain has changed and even the farming practices that engage biodynamic methods do not yield the nutritional density of food that was uh, grown when I was growing up and helping my grandmother in her organic garden, you know, 50 years ago. So uh, having said that, my early paradigm in my practice was, you know, let food be thy medicine and teaching people how to eat right was sufficient. It no longer is. So in the world of being inundated by online multiple thousands and thousands of nutritional supplements and uh, products that claim all sorts of things uh, being a consumer it's very difficult to navigate that so helping patients uh, recognize that not all the supplements are created the same that there is a great deal of uh, need to be very scrupulous and very intentional in choosing the right kinds because they're not a regulated industry and, you know has uh, left me with a handful of that i recommend to patients but a rule of thumb is it should be stated that they're usb or cgmp certified meaning that they're produced in manufacturing facilities and tested for purity and content and only then can they be helpful? But a problem with nutritional supplementation is that many nutraceutical companies have taken the model of the big pharma, and that is, here is a pill for every ill. And that is so far from functional medicine as far as it can be. And it, it results in people coming to me with suitcases of good supplements, but still feeling poorly. So helping them realize the importance of a systems approach and looking at the, you know, brain health, uh, hypothalamic pituitary health, uh, combined with the immune system and the gut, and providing them with support in those three arenas really creates a sense of not just improved mental clarity and focus, but overall a healthier um, a way of functioning on every single aspect in their health. That's wonderful. Like, you know, I'm getting a, a question from the audience. Thank you, Donna. She's asking, uh, the story is amazing. How did uh, this woman that you're talking about lost the weight? 
So, you know, after the pitch party that, that she uh, hosted for her family, they all decided the kids are old enough. And even though they're, um, they were not carnivorous and eating a lot of meat as a family, they decided that they can totally do a cleanse which is comprised of eating, you know, uh, eating nine servings of organic fruits and vegetables, favoring the veggies uh, to the fruits um, of low glycemic index and um, uh, supported by some nutritional um, uh, supplements, a shake and a drink that helps the liver and kidneys excrete the toxins and incorporating, you know, mild physical activity in the program. So after 10 days, of being vegan and eating like this, the whole family felt felt better. It, typically, you know, the cleanse is not a detox as we know it of, of, of uh, 10 years ago where people would walk around with a jug of lemon water and cayenne pepper and, and starving themselves for 10 days. Uh, cleansing- and that's, that's what my image was. That's what the general image is. And like, you yes. know, some people say, okay, I cannot do that crazy cleanse. I cannot just live on just water, lemon water. So Correct. what but, is the but, difference uh, between that cleanse that I think is and what you are recommending? Yes, uh, it, you know, what, what when we think about a cleanse on a cellular level, it's, it's really providing the cells the means of getting rid of stored toxins. So majority of the toxins are stored in fat. So first we have to mobilize them from the fat. We have to render them water soluble and then in such a form uh, liver and kidneys and skin our major detoxification organs can get rid of them via you know defecation urination and perspiration and once that's happened uh, the cells are sort of cleansed and can actually take on the cellular functions all much better than if that those functions were precluded by toxins that hung around. And unfortunately, there's no way of escaping toxins. Since World War II, CDC has registered over 100,000 toxins. And unfortunately, many of them are found in personal care products, cosmetic and, and you know, shampoos, etc., cleaning products for our home, and not to speak about pesticides, herbicides, and things that are used to adulterate our food sources. So certainly in, encouraging people and, and this whole family to read labels, buy organic, go vegan for 10 days, uh, and then incorporate the practices that we've talked about, help uh, the mom lose, I think she lost eight pounds on the cleanse, and then continues to um, be mindful and eat mostly plant but Mediterranean uh Based type uh, diet, and uh, she's losing some more. She has probably about five more pounds to lose. And interestingly, the kids who didn't have to lose anything didn't lose weight, but just day three or four became, you know, happier, more focused. The, the little kid who was bouncing around, sugared up, and it was hard for her to control him, really had a much greater attention span. So I think that. On the spectrum of you know ADD and ADHD, uh, mind is really very dependent on what we feed it, uh, and we've seen dramatic improvements even in that spectrum. So eight pound weight loss in ten days, not bad. Uh, by day three or four, mental clarity and focus and better sleep. I think that all of us can be vegan for ten days and incorporate something like that, not just once, but on a seasonal basis as the season changes and the typical now after the holidays you know in january everybody is on the weight loss uh, uh, bandwagon i recommend a cleanse experience and actually i am offering to whoever's on the call along with you dr rosina we could definitely su support people on their personal journey with the cleanse early january That'd be wonderful. So if somebody wants to join us, and I, I think I'm convinced I'm joining you, uh, anybody who wants to join us for the cleanse starting January, please send us uh, the email directly at support at drrosina.com or uh, send us a message in the Facebook group and we would be able to uh, share more information with you. 
And so um, you were saying that if somebody joins, uh, we'll be able to get a 20% off these uh, products that we would need? Um, sure. And, you know, uh, I would also offer um, the same for a personal consultation with patients who could see me personally or via telemedicine. Wonderful. So any of our listeners, if you guys want to join, please send a message from drrosina.com and we'll be able to connect you with Dr. Vesna. And before we do the special of the day, let me ask Dr. Vesna, what would happen if people don't take proactive steps to cleanse their body, to do these lifestyle changes and take proactive approach in terms of maintaining or improving their mental sharpness? Well, unfortunately, Dr. Rosina, as you and I both see, we're seeing increasing numbers of younger and younger individuals suffering from uh, ravages of chronic illness, including premature uh, cognitive decline. And the flip side of that was supported by a lot of literature. Dr. Bradison's work in Alzheimer's is one perfect example, is that you know, if we let food be our medicine, support our brain with nutrients that it needs and lifestyle changes, we can reverse that. That's wonderful. Yeah. So just knowing that we can reverse it, that's wonderful to know. And so what would happen if we start taking the steps today? Well, I think that, you know, there are uh, uh, things like a biological clock developed by Dr. Stephen Horvat at UCLA that measure really cellular aging. And by decreasing inflammation, we are actually uh, improving our longevity and aging in a much more healthy manner. In fact, a, a term has been coined inflammaging, which really it beautifully describes that premature aging uh, is dependent on uh, inflamed state of our body. So through implementing some of the uh, techniques that we've talked about, healthy sleep, healthy food, exercise, and uh, a little bit of nutritional support and personal time, we can actually reverse that biological clock and, you know, hopefully lead a healthy life into our 80s and 90s and beyond. Wonderful. Yeah. So we, we can age gracefully. That's Absolutely. Wonderful. So do you have any uh, last take home message? My last take home message is stay healthy, stay active, stay focused and connected. Wonderful. Thank you. So it's time for our special of the day. And so as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to share a little mind hack for memory. So, you know, I get a lot of patients complaining of that. They forget where they put their keys or their wallets and it's kind of really cause them distress and it gets common as you age. And so I tell them that there are three stages of for memory. When you see something, it your brain registers. So that's first stage, registering whatever you want to remember. The second stage is storage. So your brain puts that memory of like whatever you're doing in a particular file folder in the brain. Let's think about your brain as a computer and there are many different folders. So the brain puts that memory into that folder. And the third stage is the recall. So when you do need that key or that wallet, the brain goes and search in the folder and finds the information. Oh, you put the key on the table and by the dining, you know, on the dining table. That's it. And so then you would be able to go get it. So problem with any of these stages, you know, recall, registering where you're keeping it, storing where you're storing and then recall can cause the problems. So one mind hack that that can help people is by registering where you are putting it. So when you are putting your key or wallet, try to visualize and verbalize saying, okay, I'm putting my keys on the dining table. So if you have the image in your brain of, you know, the key on the dining table, which looks like this, and it stores in a visual form, it's more likely to remember. You can also enhance it by making that image kind of funny. You can just see the key jumping or dancing or many keys dancing on the top of the table. And if you have that image that is moving and dancing keys on the, on the top of the dining table, then it's more likely to be stored. And when you are ready to recall, 
then you can recall so when you are practicing mindfulness every day you bec- you register thing you observe things much more so the mindfulness practice would help you to improve your memory and focus like that so let me know if this technique helps you stay healthy safe every day is a new day keep getting better every day even 1% better every day would get make you live your best life uh, on that note take care and see you next week